Hi, I'm Mike Graham, and welcome to Tech Talk. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Maverick MK3 Spot and Profile menu map systems. We're going to be going over ways to set up those menu maps so that you get the most out of your fixture. And then later on in the video, we're going to be looking at a way to cross-load your menu map settings into other like fixtures down the line. Throughout this video, again, if you guys have any questions out there in the audience, go ahead and send those to us. Uh, we'll be happy to answer them for you. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. So let's take a look at the splash screen. Um, this is the normal function mode in the middle. This is where DMX address is, obviously. Up here, this is where you'll see your WDMX. That lets you know how much signal you have if you're using WDMX. You can use the buttons on the outside, or you can touch the display because it is a touchscreen display, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Uh, in here, you set your address, menu settings, personality, main settings, test functions, information about the fixture. We're going to concentrate on settings today. So we'll hop in here. Control mode, like I said, you have DMX, WDMX, ArtNet, or SACN. You pick any one of those. Uh, we're going to not go through every function uh, because some of them are pretty self-explanatory. Pan reverse, tilt reverse, screen reverse. Uh, this does has, have auto flip function, so when you flip the fixture over, it's automatically going to swap. But if you want to change it yourself, you can. Pan angle and tilt angles. There are some preset pan and tilt limitations if you do need to set those up so that you don't have full rotation for some reason. Uh, you have all of your move in black functions here. Uh, these are also assignable by DMX, so if you do decide that you want something here and you make that selection but then decide they're going to show, oh no, 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 I didn't want that, you can override it from, uh, from DMX. Calibration is for the touchscreen. Uh, we do offer a touchscreen lockout. We offer this, it was kind of put in there for trade shows specifically. Um, because when the fixtures are sitting on the benches, people like to go into the touchscreen and make changes and then um, kind of messes up the show for us. So we added this touchscreen lock. can lock the screen out, um, swap, pan, tilt, so, you, so that means that you just change the direction. Uh, WDMX reset, it's pretty self-explanatory. Backlight timer, also pretty self-explanatory. If I want my backlight to stay on forever, it just goes here. If I want the shortest one, it's 30 seconds. Loss of data, what the fixture does when it loses data. Are you going to hold your last look, or do you want to just go back to 50-50 blackout? Um, that just, if you hold, obviously you're holding your last look. Close is 50-50 blackout. Fan settings. In our latest software release of the Maverick MK3 profile and Maverick MK3 spot, we've added in TV25 mode and TV35 mode for fan options. These options are designed to keep your output consistent depending on your ambient temperature. For situations where you're around room temperature, you would choose TV25 mode because that's 25 degrees Celsius or the mid-70s Fahrenheit. For warmer situations, you would choose TV35 mode as that's 35 degrees Celsius or up to the mid-90s in Fahrenheit. Again, you'll see we have this new linear 2. Again, for television, uh, we did have people ask us for a more linear version of linear. So the new linear 2 version uh, actually drops you right to zero immediately. There's no ramp down time, it's just instant off. So we'll go ahead and select that. So next up is PWM options. Of note for the TV25 mode and TV35 mode, uh, we limited the PWM selections to 6,000 Hz and 15,000 Hz. Uh, that's to get optimal performance out of the LED and about out of dimming. So we just optimized it to just have those two options. Uh, next up is LED power. So if you're familiar with how we did uh, legacy mode in the Rogue series with the R1X and R2X spots, uh, we gave people the ability to raise and lower the LED power so that fixtures can match exactly in the field. We've given you the same capabilities inside the MK3s. Uh, so as we all know, some LEDs are a little bit brighter, some of the LEDs are a little bit dimmer than others, so you do get some variation. In order to fix that, we gave you guys the ability to adjust LED power 
to match your fixtures exactly so that you can calibrate everything so you have the exact same intensity across your entire range of fixtures. So setting up all those functions um, on one fixture, that's no problem. But what if I've got a table full of fixtures and I have to put all these settings into all those different lights? We have a perfect solution for that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw it to myself to walk you through exactly how to perform that function. We're gonna be taking a look at menu presets and menu crossloads in the Maverick series. Based on customer feedback, one of the things we were asked to do was to have the ability to create multiple menu maps inside the fixtures and then crossload that information from fixture to fixture. The way that we did that was we created software that allows you to have menu preset A, B, and C, and then crossload that menu map from one fixture to like fixtures all the way down the line. The way that we did this to make it super easy was we set it up so that in a tech format, such as uh, show preset or um, when you have the fixtures on the bench back at the shop, as long as you have like fixtures in line and you're all interconnected by a DMX cable, you can make this work super easy. So let's go ahead and take a look at the menu itself and show you how this is done. So we're looking at the front of the display screen and you see this little, this little letter A right here next to the DMX logo. That is your preset that you're on right now. And again, we have A, B, and C. And if we go to settings, we can look at all the things that are as they are in preset A. So let's say, for example, maybe preset A is my rock and roll setting, preset B is my shop setting, and preset C is a rental setting. And this way, when I, send the show, when I send my show out, maybe I want to have everything in preset A. So I would go to here, or I would say, let's just make it the preset B. So preset B, I hit enter, and the fixture is going to automatically reset. It's going to go through the reset function, and everything that is set up in preset B is now going to be uh, come up on the display. Okay, so the reset is complete, and as you can see, we're in menu set B. Our DMX personality changed from 54 channels to 38 channels. Our IP address is still the same. That never changes, even when you do the crossload. And if I go, sorry, into my settings menu, you can see that if, we, if there were changes, they would be showing up right now in my menu B setting. So let's talk about preset sync. Enter, and that fixture is going to reset. And when it comes back up, all the information that's in the settings menu for this fixture will be in that fixture as well. So now that the reset is complete, uh, you can see that this fixture is now in menu B, DMX address 1, 38 channel mode, which matches the head fixture exactly. One of the things to be conscious of is don't set your DMX addresses in all your fixtures before you do the preset sync, um, because the DMX address from the head fixture does carry through all the other fixtures. Um, but that's only, that's only real caveat in this situation. But this is designed to be a massive time saver in fixture setups, so there you go. We hope you've picked up a few cool tips today. Um, again, one of the most annoying things about getting a rig into the air is figuring out that one of your fixtures is in slow pan tilt mode and the rest of them are in fast mode or your dim modes are different or PWM is different. This software system is designed to fix that problem. Um, presets are your friends, so go ahead and use them. Uh, until next time, my name is Mike Graham, and thanks for watching Tech Talk.